Have you ever wondered how Earth, our blue breathing living planet, managed to survive 4.6 billion years of utter chaos? This small sphere of rock has been battered by meteors, frozen into a giant snowball, scorched by volcanic infernos, and inhabited by everything from alien like trilobites to thunderous dinosaurs. Somehow, after all that here, we are walking, talking, building cities, launching satellites. But to understand how we got here, we have to go back to the beginning. And by beginning, I mean the very birth of the solar system. Roughly 4.6 billion years ago, there was no sun, no earth, no planets. Only a dense cold cloud of gas and dust drifting silently in space. But then something happened. A disturbance. Perhaps the shock wave from a nearby supernova sent ripples through the cloud. Gravity began its work. The cloud collapsed in on itself, forming a spinning disk of hot matter, the solar nebula. At its center, intense pressure and heat ignited nuclear fusion. A star was born. Our sun. But the story doesn't stop there. Farther out, in the spinning disk, particles of rock metal and ice began clumping together. These clumps grew into planetesimals, the seeds of planets. Over millions of years, Collisions between these clumps formed larger bodies. Some would become gas giants, others rocky terrestrial planets. One of those rocky worlds was Earth, though. At the time, it looked nothing like it does today. The early Earth was a molten hellscape. Its surface was a churning sea of magma, constantly reshaped by volcanic eruptions. The air unbreathable, filled with hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and methane. The planet had no oceans, no blue sky, no life. But it was about to face its first great catastrophe, one that would shape the future forever. A Mars-sized body named Theia collided with Earth. The impact was apocalyptic molten rock and debris launched into space. But out of destruction came creation. That debris formed a ring around Earth, and from it, the moon was born. This moon, orbiting closely, at first stabilized Earth's rotation and tilted axis. It gave us tides and helped regulate climate crucial ingredients for the life to come. At first, Earth was too hot for liquid water. But over hundreds of millions of years, the planet cooled. Steam in the atmosphere condensed fell as rain. And rained. And rained. It likely rained for thousands of years. And as the planet cooled further, these rains collected into the first oceans. By around 3.8 billion years ago, Earth was a water world, its surface almost entirely covered by a global ocean. These oceans weren't just a backdrop. They were the cradle, the place where life would begin. No one knows exactly how life began. Maybe it was deep sea hydrothermal vents where mineral rich water met intense heat and pressure. Maybe it was in shallow tidal pools where organic molecules danced in cycles of evaporation and concentration. What we do know is this. Around 3.7 billion years ago, life appeared. Not plants, not animals, but simple single-celled organisms, bacteria and archaea. They were tiny, invisible, but incredibly tough. They could survive in harsh, oxygen-free environments. They reproduced, adapted, evolved. And slowly, over hundreds of millions of years, they began to change the planet itself. 
about 2.4 billion years ago, a special type of microbe emerged cyanobacteria. These tiny organisms could perform photosynthesis using sunlight water and carbon dioxide to produce energy. But they also produced something else oxygen. At first, this oxygen was absorbed by iron in the oceans, forming rust that settled into thick bands on the ocean floor. But eventually, the oxygen overflowed. It began filling the atmosphere, and this known as the Great Oxidation Event changed everything. Oxygen was toxic to many ancient microbes. Entire species went extinct. But for others, it was an opportunity. Life became more complex. Cells developed nuclei. New forms began to emerge. As life evolved, Earth's crust shifted. Continents moved, collided, and merged into vast supercontinents. The first Valbara, then Ur, then Rodinia, one of the largest in history. But tectonics weren't the only changes. Earth's climate swung wildly. With low carbon dioxide levels, temperatures plummeted. Around 700 million years ago, the planet likely froze over entirely a state scientists call Snowball Earth. The oceans were covered in ice. Sunlight was blocked. Life survived only in thermal vents or tiny pockets of liquid water. And yet, survive it did. Around 540 million years ago, something astonishing happened. Life exploded into diversity. This was the Cambrian Explosion, a time when most major animal groups first appeared. Creatures developed shells, exoskeletons, and eyes. Trilobites crawled across ocean floors. Worms burrowed. Jellyfish pulsed through the water. But Earth's story isn't just about creation. It's also about destruction. Roughly 440 million years ago, came the first mass extinction, the Ordovician-Silurian event. It wiped out over 80% of marine life. Then came more, the Devonian extinction, the Carboniferous glaciations, the Permian-Triassic extinction, the Great Dying where 90% of all species disappeared. Yet life always found a way to bounce back. 250 million years ago, after the great dying life rebounded, reptiles flourished, plants grew lush, and then dinosaurs. They dominated for over 150 million years. From the towering Argentinosaurus to the terrifying Tyrannosaurus Rex, they ruled the land. Meanwhile, the supercontinent Pangaea began to break apart, forming the continents we know today. But 66 million years ago, their reign ended. A 10 kilometer wide asteroid slammed into present day Mexico. The impact was catastrophic firestorms, tsunamis, years of darkness. The dinosaurs vanished. Only birds, their descendants remained. And with them gone, a new group began to rise, mammals. Mammals had existed alongside dinosaurs, mostly small and nocturnal. But now they spread. They grew larger, more diverse. Around six million years ago, a hominin species called Sahelanthropus emerged in Africa. Over time, our ancestors evolved to walk upright. By 2.5 million years ago, they were making tools. By 800,000 years ago, they had discovered fire, a revolutionary step. Fire gave warmth, safety, the ability to cook, and perhaps the first spark of community. Then about 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens appeared. They painted caves, hunted in groups, developed a language, and slowly they began to shape the world. 10,000 years ago, 
humans began farming. They built villages, then cities. Cultures flourished. Empires rose and fell. Religions formed. Science blossomed. Then, just 250 years ago, came the Industrial Revolution. In a blink of geological time, we transformed the planet building machines, altering landscapes, launching satellites. In 1804, there were one billion of us. By 1927, two billion. Today, over eight billion humans share this fragile world. But with this rise came a new challenge. Climate change, fossil fuels deforestation, rising temperatures, melting ice caps. Species are vanishing. Ecosystems are collapsing. Some scientists warn we may be at the edge of a sixth mass extinction, one we are causing. Earth has survived fire ice and cosmic catastrophe. It's hosted microbes and monsters, dinosaurs and dreamers. And now it holds us. The story of Earth is far from over and the next chapter, well, that's in our hands.